And so I came up with a plan of my own. A lot of people say the devil made me do it. I'm not going to say it because he didn't make me do anything. Mm -hmm. He suggested it, and I adhered to that suggestion. Mm -hmm. But um, I planned that out. And um, I did something that I knew that he would never thought I would do. people back up when they get to the to the fire sometimes the fire is so hot that mm -hmm. people just just it's not even worth it I'm just going to go back to what I what I have succumbed to or what I've experienced before and mm -hmm. I know you being a pastor you have to have seen that mm -hmm. uh, many times before unfortunately but what do you think the problem is as far as not getting in it um, well it's flesh mm -hmm. the flesh doesn't want to be uncomfortable the flesh doesn't want to be hurt. The flesh does not want to be disturbed. Mm -hmm. The flesh doesn't want to go through anything. The flesh wants what it wants mm -hmm. when it wants mm -hmm. it. And so um, a lot of people, they want to reign, but they don't want to suffer. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm not, you know, downing those people mm -hmm. or anything because at one time I was mm -hmm. there. But the more um, closer you get to God, mm -hmm. the, the, the more time you spend with him um, through your um, meditation, your devotion, mm -hmm. you know, prayer mm -hmm. and, and, and fasting, yes, and reading your word, the closer you get to him, the less afraid you become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and because you know that God is always there with you and that it's necessary. He's not going to forsake mm -hmm. you. It's not going to let you die in the mm -hmm. fire but it's necessary to strengthen you, to build you up. Mm -hmm. Because uh, what is it, when gold goes through fire, it gets what? Refined. Yes. So it's mm -hmm. necessary. Mm -hmm. So tell me, who was, who was Serena before writing this book, after you've experienced the, the experiences you had going, getting to the book to write it. But what has transpired from you putting things on paper mm -hmm. to after you released this book? Well, Serena, bef um, before the experience in the book, um, oof, I, I just say this, I thank God for Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I thank God for Jesus. Um, I've always been a type of person, if I'd done something, I felt bad about it, mm -hmm. but I still would do it, mm -hmm. you know. And um, I was a fighter, mm -hmm. um, and, and I fought all the time, and, and, I, and I suffered from low self-esteem mm -hmm. really bad. Mm -hmm. um, at one time, I used to weigh over 300 pounds, mm -hmm. and um, I, I suffered from low self-esteem, mm -hmm. and so um, I, I would find love in all the wrong places. Mm -hmm. and, and so after doing that, I finally um, met um, my first husband and, and got married, and and I still was on the wild side. Mm -hmm. um, and I think about three months after our union, um, I gave the Lord my heart and I made him the head of my life. And um, I went through um, the things that I went to, the events that I went through um, in the book and God allowed me to overcome it. And um, then the person after that, um, I don't know, I just, I just feel that it made me stronger. Mm -hmm. Even though when you're going through it, you don't feel, feel like strong. It. Not at mm -hmm. all. Not at all. But afterwards, you know, I, I found out I was stronger, you know, for having gone through that. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand because many times I would cry and plead with God to get me out. I was pastoring a church and going home and being abused. Mm -hmm. And and, and, and mm -hmm. silently coming and smiling, mm -hmm. you know, to the congregation. And I'm continuing to, to, to be faithful mm -hmm. and steadfast mm -hmm. and unmovable. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of those type, there's no excuse mm -hmm. why you can't come to church. Because mm -hmm. if I was coming to church and going home and getting abused, there's no excuse for anybody mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. And had eight children. And was driving the bus mm -hmm. and, pick, and taking folks home. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, 
I just I just thank God for the experience um, that I went through um, because if it had not been for God, I do believe I, I may have would have lost my mind, mm -hmm. you know. But I thank God that God was right there with me, and I would um, plead with God and beg God and ask Him to get me out, get me out, get me out, get me out. And I would pray for other people and see them healed, you know, physically and emotionally. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, God, this is not right. Mm -hmm. This is not right. I'm going home and getting abused. This is not right, God. And, and that went on for some time. And um, I just couldn't take it anymore. And um, even though I was a woman of the cloth, now I'm all about transparency mm -hmm. because I believe in um, being a blessing to somebody mm -hmm. else and helping somebody else. And I was a woman of the cloth. And I started thinking like Medea, mm -hmm. you know, he had to be got right then. <laughs> um, nothing seemed to move, you know, this, this guy. And so I felt like God wasn't hearing me and, and God wasn't um, attending to my prayer. and He wasn't coming to my rescue. And so I came up with a plan of my own. A lot of people say the devil made me do it. I'm not going to say that because he didn't make me do anything. Mm -hmm. He suggested it and I adhered to that suggestion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But um, I planned that out, and um, I did something that I knew that he wouldn't have never thought I would do. Mm -hmm. And um, I, as a pastor, the leader of the flock, went out, and I had a um, one night stand, not once but twice. Mm -hmm. And I came back and I gave him all the details of it, and he cried like a baby. Mm -hmm. And that gave me pleasure that he cried because mm -hmm. I was lost by this time mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm full of bitterness mm -hmm. and everything. And um, I, I was, I was again, I was lost and. Um, I would go back to church, but I knew enough about God. Even though I'm the pastor, I wouldn't come in the pulpit. I would get one of my other ministers to mention. Nobody knows what's mm -hmm. going on. Mm -hmm. And um, that went on for about two weeks. And um, I tried to minister one time, um, but I had told God in the beginning when I first started pastoring, I said, God, I don't want to be a phony preacher. Mm -hmm. I said, if I ever get out of your will, do not allow me um, to be able to preach. Because if I'm able to still preach in my mess, mm -hmm. then um, it's a good chance I probably won't come out of my mess because I know that I can still get by off my gift. I know I can still get by off my gift. And so those words rung true one day when I tried to minister. Um, and God, my mind was discombobulated. Mm -hmm. I could not minister. And so um, right after that, um, I was in my room and I was texting one of the young men I had the affair with and a young woman. A young lady called my phone I hadn't heard from in three years. And um, she said, Pastor, and I cringed mm -hmm. because I didn't feel like a pastor. I, I, I had an ought against God. Mm -hmm. I was bitter. I was upset. And plus, I was trying to text one of the, the young men to hook up with him. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, how did you even get my number? Mm -hmm. Why are you calling me? Mm -hmm. So I just love to talk. I wasn't paying her any attention until she said these words. She said, will you pray for me? And I took the phone from my ear and I said, pray for you. I said, God, don't hear my prayers. And I put the phone back to my ear and still text. And she said it again. And I said, well, let me pray to get her off the phone. And I began to open up my mouth and say words that I did not mean. And so um, I did that for a good 30 seconds until something happened. I've never experienced this before, never since. A wheel turned in my stomach mm. and I jumped. I said, okay, well, maybe it's me, you know. I put the phone back to my ear and I began to pray again. And it turned again. And I threw the telephone and I ran in my bathroom and I fell on the floor. And all of my body fluids started doing its own thing. Mm. And God delivered me in that floor. And he delivered me from my abuser, because though I wanted the abuse to stop, I, I, I didn't want to, to be um, in the marriage anymore. Um, I, I wanted to be free. My abuser was still in my spirit. Mm. And in that floor, God delivered me in that floor. And he said, get up. And I got up and looked in the mirror. And he said, don't walk back in your job, because I was working on a job that a lot of men would, would, would try to um, you know, date me, mm -hmm. and I loved it mm -hmm. because I wasn't getting the attention from my husband, so it, it gratified my flesh. Mm -hmm. And God said, don't walk back in your job anymore. He said, you go back and get your church back. Mm -hmm. And he told me these words. He said, I'm all you need to survive. He said, a man does not validate you. He adds to what's already there. And I stood in that mirror and I said, yes, Lord. That 
that was on a Saturday, that Sunday I went back to the church and I preached for the first time after having the affairs. And I felt like I was in the heavenlies. I felt like my feet wasn't even mm. on the ground. I came back better. I came back more anointed. I came back wiser. I came back um, more faithful. I came back more dedicated to the Lord. And I came back free. Needless to say, that uh, my abuser still would try to taunt me, him and his, because he, he had a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. I neglect to tell you that part for a year and a half. And they would call my phone and, and pick at me and so forth. He would come to the church where I pastored and would be dancing around. I still was smiling. Mm -hmm. I was free. And God um, freed me out of that situation and blessed me with a, a wonderful husband mm -hmm. who loves me for me. Loves me a God fearing mm -hmm. man, a man full of wisdom, a man after God's own heart. A wonderful, awesome man. Mm -hmm. That's what God did for me. Most people, after going through something like that, sometimes um, once you go through something very traumatic, you need a pill to wake up. You need a pill to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. But God, yes. when He delivered me. He healed me. Yes. He healed me. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's why I say I'm an overcomer. Mm -hmm. I didn't just live through it, but I lived after it, mm -hmm. and I went on. And I live on purpose. Mm -hmm. I live on purpose. And Absolutely. that's what I want if everyone that reads that book, that's what I want them to take from, from this, that you too can be an overcomer no matter what you're going through, mm -hmm. no matter what situation you may be facing. Mm -hmm. With God, mm -hmm. and because of God, you too can become an overcomer. Yes, ma'am. It's as though it never even happened. Mm -hmm. Come out with no, mm -hmm. you may have some scars, you may have some scars, mm -hmm. but you're healed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're healed. Mm -hmm. And I just thank God. Absolutely. Thank God. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. When you were writing this book, mm -hmm. were you writing from the place that you are now? Or were you writing through the pain? Either one, I believe that it works. Mm -hmm. Either Absolutely. way. Actually, I wrote from the place I'm in now. Mm -hmm. Though, when I was writing the book, I was I was crying a lot of the time, mm -hmm. and I was crying one because I'm like, wow, I can't believe that this is you know, this was really my life. Mm -hmm. You know, it seemed so long ago. Mm -hmm. It wasn't, but it seemed as though it was so long ago, and it seems as though it was somebody else's life. Yes, ma'am. You know, and in some instances, um, I felt the twinge of, of of some of the pain. You know, try to come back, mm -hmm. and I hurry up and rebuke that. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not taking ownership mm -hmm. of that. God mm -hmm. has already freed me Amen. of that. Um, but I wrote from this standpoint, mm -hmm. and I and I just thank God. I thank God. I don't hold any um, ill will mm -hmm. towards anybody, my music, anybody. Absolutely. Anybody. So one of the things that uh, I just want to go back to as far as what you've shared, you said that uh, you were doing those things as a pastor. Mm -hmm. um, you were you were watching other people get healed mm -hmm. and praying for them and they were delivered and healed emotionally and physically, but mm -hmm. you still went back. You still had to go back mm -hmm. to the abuser. And when you said that, I started thinking, you know, there's a lot of people in that position mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. Tell me, what would you ch share with that person who's in that position now? Tell somebody, mm -hmm. tell somebody, and I also want to tell them they don't have they don't have to suffer alone, mm -hmm. and they don't have to suffer at all mm -hmm. because you can get out. You can you can get away, um, and it was necessary. This is um, what the Lord told me. That gave me really the strength also to keep moving forward. He said, "I came that you might have life, and life more abundantly." Say this is not the abundant life that I died for you to have. Absolutely. I said, you're right, God. Absolutely. That's all I needed mm -hmm. to hear. Mm-hmm. That's mm -hmm. all I needed to hear. Yeah. That's I think that that is, that is the, the key right there because mm -hmm. even as I reflect as you are talking on my own personal journey, that is one of the things my go-to scripture was the joy of the Lord is my strength. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it isn't, it was, it is yes, my yes. strength. And yes. so therefore I have the strength to keep moving. And so in that we become what you've spoke about in this book, what the title of this book is, yes. The Overcomer. Overcomer. And 
all aspects of life because like the Lord shared with you and reminded you of his word that I've died so that you can have life and not only just have life, but have it more abundantly. Yes. And so as I look at this person today, I see strength and I see a person who has dealt in the fire, but wasn't burned and trusted on the Lord. Yes. You have stories to tell that some people may not ever hear, yes. Yes. but you know that between you and the Lord, yes. you know who brought you out of it. Mm -hmm. So I want you to just take this moment if you can, just to look into this camera here and just encourage someone else to, to, for them to know that you went through the fire but you're still here and you're better. You are a better person now mm -hmm. and you can relate to more people now mm -hmm. because of what you went through and while you're still standing. Amen. If that's you on today that may be going through um, any challenges, struggles, um, um, a situation in your life, you can come out. Do not sit there um, and suffer. Um, that is not God's plan for your life. That is not God's purpose for your life. Um, God wants us um, to, to bloom with flowers and he wants us to bloom. He wants us to have the abundant life um, that he died for us to have. Um, if that's you, if, you, if you're suffering um, from any type of abuse, because I know there's a lot in the church that are suffering um, from abuse and, and they may be embarrassed to um, speak about it to someone um, or they may be afraid of what other people may think um, about them because they're even stayed in that situation because um, after a while you, I, I know for me, I used to always run um, to maybe my sister or my, my parents' house for help. Um, they never turned me away, but within myself, I didn't want to feel like I was a burden um, to them. Listen, you're not a burden, get help, seek help. Don't, don't let it spiral out of control. Get help now. God is strengthening you right now. Go in the strength of God. If you need strength, He's your strength. He's right there with you through everything that you're going through. And He wants to deliver you. He wants you to be free. He wants you to, 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 to go on and, and just flourish. This is um, God's yes. will for your life. You do not have to yes. suffer you can become an overcomer. Not only will you just survive mm -hmm. through your situation, but you can overcome your situation where, where after you come out, it's as if you never were in it in the first mm -hmm. place. That's true overcoming. Mm -hmm. It's if you never even um, was in in the first place. God is just great. Yes, he He's is. Just great. He is, he is. You know, as you were talking about, or as you were sharing that, one thing that, that, that I thought about or that came up in my spirit is that we don't want to identify ourselves while we're going through. Mm -hmm. we, we never want to become, or we never want that issue or that challenge or the, that experience mm -hmm. to identify who we are mm -hmm. as Christians or as believers or daughters mm -hmm. of, of the Most High. And I think that sometimes that can be um, something that holds people Mm -hmm. back in bondage because who am I without this? Yes. But once we get into the word, we know who we are yes. without this. Yes. yes. You, yes. You, you understand. So I just, I thank you for, for coming on the show today and just thank sharing you. with you. us and, and your testimony and thank just the sweet spirit you have thank you. Thank with you. you, but so much power behind it and anointing behind it. And so I just thank you for your time and Thank you for tuning in to Alabaster's Box. We hope and pray and believe that your thoughts have been inspired and enriched by Mrs. Serena Harris or Apostle Serena Harris story today. Grab a book. Where can they find this book? Um, they can email me at Miss Fabulous, that's spelled M-Z-F-B-L-U-S at gmail.com. Or you can find me on Facebook, Serena Miss Fabulous Harris. And I will get, um, make arrangements to get it to you. Mm -hmm. Make sure you are able to obtain a book. Absolutely. So grab a book. How much is the book? $10. $10. Mm -hmm. The book is $10, but I'm sure it's valued much more. Remember that you're investing in your life and you are going to overcome anything that you are facing at this time. The key is if you want to. Yes. So grab a book, allow this to minister to you and be blessed. Thank you. Hi, this is Serena Harris, and I just finished a segment of Alabaster's Box. 
and I have really, really, really enjoyed myself. This is an, an awesome, awesome program um, that's going to catapult a lot of people into their rightful place in the kingdom. This is awesome. Um, tune in. Um, every time they're, they're, they have segments available, tune in um, and watch Alabaster's Boss. You'll be blessed. I know I certainly am. Everyone, I hope you guys are enjoying what you are hearing thus far. Please tell your friends about us, tell your church members and your family members. Let's take this word to the world. Please share, subscribe, and like. And remember, if you change your thoughts, you change your life. Thank you.